It's just before sunset in Santa Cruz, Bolivia. La Mia Flight 2933 is about to take off. On board is Brazil's Cinderella football team Chapecoense. They're on their way to Colombia to complete a remarkable fairy tale season. Based in the small city of Chapeco, southwest of Sao Paulo, the mid-level team has made an unlikely climb up the ranks of South American football. Now they're heading for their first ever final in the prestigious Copa Sudamericana. The team has hired a small Bolivian airline called La Mia to take it to Medellin. The plane departs Santa Cruz, Bolivia at 6.18 p.m. It will be a near four and a half hour, 1600 mile trip to Rio Negro, just outside Medellin, Colombia, the site of the championship game. Captain Miguel Quiroga and First Officer Fernando Goitia are veteran Bolivian pilots with more than 6,000 flight hours each. A young Bolivian pilot, Cici Arias, is observing from the jump seat. In the cabin, the team settles in for the night flight. Far below, their destination, Jose Maria Cordova Airport in the city of Rio Negro, is very busy getting planes to and from its single runway. First Officer Goitia checks in with air traffic controller, Yanis Molina. Molina immediately instructs the crew to hold for their final approach because other planes are lined up to land. La Mia 2933 goes into a holding pattern at a navigation point called Gemli. A few minutes later, a request from the La Mia cockpit takes Molina by surprise. La Mia 2933, request priority for approach. The plane has now been holding for about seven minutes. But the situation in the cockpit has suddenly become more urgent. We have a few emergency. That's why I'm asking you at once for final approach, requesting immediate descent. In the cabin, the lights go off. The engines fall silent. The passengers feel the plane sinking. The crew need the controller to give them directions to the runway. But the plane has disappeared from her radar. Emergency crews rush to the crash site. Mostly they find dead bodies. But against the odds, seven passengers are still alive. 70 people are dead, making this one of the worst tragedies in the history of sport. The La Mia plane hit the crest of an 8,700-foot mountain called Cerro Gordo. The Colombian Aircraft Accident Investigation Group wastes no time starting their work. A team is on site at daybreak. The plane was configured for landing. It's clear that the crew was descending towards the airport, but it crashed 10 miles short of the runway. The fuel level indicators are at zero. Investigators are mystified. Why would the plane have run out of fuel? Was it a fuel leak? All four engines are located and examined. There is no sign of fire or failure. They conclude the engines worked until the fuel ran out. The question is, how did the fuel get so low in the first place? Was it a mechanical failure or human error? The entire football world is grieving. In the team's hometown, fans take to the stadium to pay their respects. Under mounting pressure, investigators dig into their work. They hope the flight recorders will help them understand why Lamia 2933 couldn't make it to the airport. Both the cockpit voice recorder and flight data recorder appear to be in good shape, but they'll have to be sent to a lab to be processed before investigators can analyze them. While the flight recorders are being analyzed, 
Investigators focus their attention on the last person to speak with the crew of La Mia 2933, air traffic controller Yaneth Molina. Within days, recordings of her communications with the pilots circulate in the news and on social media. Many blame her for what happened. Investigators need to get to the bottom of what she did. To find out, they turn to the air traffic control tapes which recorded the final 18 minutes of communication between Molina and the crew. Even after reporting a fuel problem, the crew doesn't give Molina any cause for concern. Only when Molina checks in with them does the crew finally speak up. Moments later, the crew reports the plane has lost power. Investigators conclude Molina did what she could to help Lamia 2933 in those stressful moments before the crash. Investigators are ready to analyze the information from Lamia 2933's flight data recorder. One hour and 40 minutes before the end of the flight, the recorder cuts out. The investigators have no way of knowing what the crew said to each other in the moments before the crash. It's a huge setback. To understand why the pilots acted so recklessly, investigators search for clues in their training records. Both pilots recently completed proficiency checks for the Avro 146. The captain has more than 3,400 hours on the aircraft, but an examiner's comment outlining one of the pilot's weaknesses grabs the investigator's attention. The first officer was trained in the Bolivian Air Force and had been flying for 20 years, but he also has an examiner's comment that raises concern. Training records reveal that Lamia 2933's crew was prone to errors in emergency situations. But investigator Echeverri's team needs to know why the fuel emergency happened in the first place. Could a flight planning error be the cause? Lamia was initially hired to fly the team from Sao Paulo, Brazil to Medellin, Colombia. But there was a hitch in that plan. Because Lamia is a Bolivian charter company, Brazilian regulations did not allow it to conduct a flight from Brazil to Colombia. Only operators from either of those two countries are permitted to do that. So the team was forced to take a regular commercial flight to Bolivia, from where they could take Lamia to Medellin. O fone. Vai começar a viagem para Colômbia aí, ó. Dia a dia, os caras Acre, Acre, depois nós Investigators travel to Bolivia's Santa Cruz Airport, where Lamia 2933 fueled up. They want to know exactly how much was in the tanks before it took off. The plane could only fly 50 miles further than the planned flight to Rio Negro. The plane had nowhere near enough fuel to meet legal requirements. The crew had made the same flight, but in the opposite direction. Without any reserve fuel. Each time, they made it. That led them to make a fatal miscalculation about the amount of fuel needed to get to Rio Negro. The crash would never have happened if they had refueled in Bogotá. But the crew would have had to explain to authorities why they left Santa Cruz without enough fuel. And the team would have been upset with yet more delays. One key question remains for investigators. Why would the pilots need to cover their traps? The final report attributes the accident to inappropriate planning and execution of the flight and failure to follow proper fueling requirements. match using players loaned from other teams. They take to their home pitch in front of 20,000 jubilant fans.